Looks acting on the structures can be due to the external forces such as the wind pressure, the retained earth and also the seismic force. For a multi-storey building, the wind pressure is to be considered. When there are basement levels, the pressure due to the retained earth is also considered. For the building situated within the seismic regions, seismic force are to be considered as well. On top of that, horizontal force may need to apply on the building to cater for the notional inclinations of the vertical member. As in the reality, a building is constructed floor by floor it is almost impossible to have column perfectly in the vertical positions. For some reasons, there could be slight mispositions of the columns or misalignment of the column, not in the perfectly vertical conditions. For the eccentricity of the loop transferring from the top level of the buildings to the foundations, a minimum rotational moment may add on the columns. This is to be taken into account by assuming a horizontal force at each level with about 1% of the total vertical load of that level acting on the structure. To analyze a frame structures of a multi-story building subjected to the lateral load, the cantilever method may be used. The entire frame structure is considered as a cantilever manner, where the lateral load causes the rotational moment that can overturn the structures, while the columns of the structures through the axial force generate resisting moments to the overturning load caused by the lateral loads. This forms a situation that some columns are undergoing compressions while the others are undergoing tension. These are a few assumptions related to the cantilever method. First, it is assumed that the point of cotra flexures are located at the midpoint of all the columns and beams. In another word, the cantilever method is used to estimate the moment acting in the beams and the columns. In order to determine the moment acting on the members, it is assumed that there are imaginary forces acting at the midspan of the beams and the columns. And the moment acting on the beams and the column will be equals to this imaginary load multiply half of the beam span and the half of the column span. It is also assumed that the direct action loads in the columns are in proportion to their distance to the center of gravity of the frame. For a symmetry curve structures here, the center of gravity is here. Based on the principles of static equilibrium, we will expect the resultant force from the foundations will be going upward for the two further columns and another two resultant going downward for the two columns which are nearer to the lateral load. This resultant force will generate resistance to the lateral load. Assuming the frame structure here is perfectly rigid, the overturning load will induce high magnitudes of the resultant at the furthest away from the center of gravity. This leads to a situation that the direct axial forces acting in the column further away from the center of gravity we have a higher magnitude of the axial force as compared to the column nearer to the center of gravity. Next, 
For the simplicity of the frank analysis process, it is assumed that all the columns in a story are of equal cross-sectional area.